Welcome back to another Passage Breakdown. I'm John, and today we're going through the AAMC FLE 5, the free practice exam, chemistry and physics passage number five. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. So looking at this passage, it looks pretty small, but um, looks can be deceiving. It's not the size of the boat when it comes to the MCAT. Sometimes the smaller passages are a little bit more difficult, but hopefully that's not the case here. Let's go ahead and start reading. Right off the bat, it says the steroid progesterone, remember steroid, that's going to be basic science, we highlight it, has an important role in the female reproductive system. Researchers interested in studying membrane progesterone receptors, NPRs, developed a method to produce and purify the protein in its active form. So here they're just saying that um, we have found a way to purify the receptor for this specific protein. First, the researchers devised a way to prepare a specific NPR known as HNPR-alpha using the machinery of yeast cells. Oh, this is riveting. In order to facilitate purification and identification in later studies, they manipulated the yeast cells so that they attached two different tags to the C-terminal end of the protein. Okay, let's go ahead and flowchart a little bit of this out. It's starting to get a little convoluted. So it's saying that progesterone, which is, we're going to say prog, binds to an NPR. And we wanted to find a specific NPR. And so to do that, we're going through two distinct sequences. So let's see if we can identify these sequences. The first tag, compound one, is a peptide sequence. So I'm just going to put pep here. So it's a peptide sequence that makes up proteins that acts as an epitope, which is part of a larger peptide sequence that is recognized by the immune system. Okay, well, immune system is a basic science. Then they, then they show us this compound. There's a lot of amino acids here, so that's definitely a topic that they could test us on. The second sequence consisted of six consecutive histidine res residues. Remember, histidine's an amino acid. The sequence binds tightly to nickel cations. In chromatography, histidine six tag label of proteins can be eluted from nickel two plus supported columns by adding a small molecule to the elutant that mimics the side chain of histidine. Okay, so they're talking about chromatography here. What type of chromatography are they referencing? They're referencing affinity chromatography here. Um, and, and histidine is actually like the classic example of affinity chromatography. So if you know what affinity chromatography is, you know what this is. So their second second method of purification is affinity with histidine molecules, histidine affinity chromatography. Okay, so now this is completely prepared. You know, we mixed all the ingredients and we get our cake. So HMPR alpha. So we have to go through these two purification processes to get to HMPR alpha to make sure that what we were looking at was actually HMPR alpha. All right, long walk. The researchers conducted a binding assay that utilized tritium labeled 1267H3 progesterone to measure the KD, which is a dissociation constant, or maybe it's the association constant, I don't know. They're kind of, they're not very consistent about what, what that means on the MCAT. All you know is that whenever they have K sub something, that we're talking about something to do with like kinetics and, and law of mass action. But you can get a little bit of an insight based off of what the lowercase letter is. D is usually for dissociation, but not necessarily for it. So HMPR alpha was then extracted from the membranes using this molecule, compound two, the researchers, okay, so we extracted it using compound two. So I jumped the gun a little bit, but we'll say compound two. The researchers purified this HMPR alpha with two successive rounds of chromatography that exploited each of the texts. So meaning they took what they thought was HMPR and they ran it through both of these processes again to make sure like, hey, what we've got is actually HMPR alpha. The buffers, so buffer, that's a basic science. Um, used to elute the protein contain 300 millimolars sodium chloride, 500 of a salt for whatever this acid is, and then pK is 7.2. Okay, so this is kind of looking like we might have to do some Henderson-Hasselbalch. We'll keep that in mind. And various amounts of sodium hydroxide with our molecular mass of that. During the first chromatography step, a specific chemical agent was immobilized on the stationary phase. Well, that's kind of how chromatography works, right? To bind to the, the compound one tag. Um, after the second chromatography step, which utilized the histine tag, the researchers used the same binding assay and found that KD was similar. Okay, so their process of taking what they thought was HMPR alpha and running it back through these purification steps was successful. Um, and just to make sure I've illustrated this point, what they're doing is they're taking this big chromatography tube and they are taking, we'll say that number one is here, they're putting the particles through like a tube that separates for compound one, and then they're putting the particles through a tube that separates for compound two. And so whatever comes out at the end should be pure HMPR alpha. That's what they're talking about here. So the passage felt a little all over the place. Uh, I mean, they, they talked about 
progesterone and then separating for it. So maybe this is a big like research methods passage. I don't know, we'll see in the questions. So question number 21 says, the ligand of HMPR alpha is derived from which compound? Okay, so before you simplify this question, you've got to say, okay, well, what is the ligand? So what's binding? Remember, the ligand is something that binds to a protein. So what binds to HMPR alpha? Well, we've got that in our flowchart. Progesterone binds to MPR, and HMPR alpha is a type of MPR. So now this question is, Pretty simple, because they told us that progesterone was a steroid. This question is, which of these is the precursor for steroids? And the correct answer for that is cholesterol. Right, cholesterol is in all of our sex hormones. So now, now number 22 says the second purification step is which type of chromatographic separation? Okay, so I kind of gave this one away, but they're talking about affinity chromatography here, right? So this is talking about the histidine one. So the correct answer is A. Size exclusion would have been talking about maybe them putting uh, like, like successive beads that have different holes and the molecules would get separated based off of which one was larger. The bigger ones would elute first. We didn't talk about that. Cation exchange would talk about if the column itself had a bunch of positively charged molecules and the negative particles stuck to it. We didn't talk about that. And then anion exchange we just flip those phases. So does it have a bunch of negatives that are stuck to the wall and then the positive particles that you're putting through the tube stick to the negatives? Now we didn't talk about that at all. That was not what the second one was talking about. So the correct answer here is A. And then number 23 says, how many moles of sodium chloride were obtained in half a liter of the buffer solution used to elute HMPR alpha? So we're talking about moles of sodium chloride and we're given liters. So what does that make you think of? Well, it makes me think of Molarity is equal to moles per liter. So let's go back to up to the passage and see if we have molarity. And if we do, then we should be able to get this correct. And sure enough, they give us 300 millimoles of sodium chloride. So let's go ahead and do the alphabet soup method, move these around to solve for moles. So multiplying liters over, we have mole is equal to molarity times liter. And then we're gonna go ahead and plug these in. So make sure you're paying attention to King Henry drinking chocolate milk. We've got 300 millimolar. So 300 times 10 to the negative three, which is gonna be the same thing as 0.3. And then we're gonna multiply that times 500 times 10 to the negative three. So once you work all that out, you're gonna end up getting 1.5 times 10 to the negative one. So a quick way to do this is you could multiply 300 times 500 and realize that it's gonna be some kind of multiple of like 15, because three times five is 15. And then you would be able to notice like, oh, there's only one that starts with 1.5. Or you could oppositely work out the proper scientific notations and get to 10 to the negative one and realize, oh, there's only one with 10 to the negative one. If you wanna be safe, you probably should do both. But if you're trying to be quick, there's a little shortcut for you. So the correct answer is D. Number next says the structure of compound two is shown. Okay, compound two, that's the one that kind of helped us select for H and PR alpha. Which structural features is or are most important to the functioning of this compound as described in the passage? Okay, let's go back and refresh ourselves on how this compound was actually functioning. It says that we used it to extract from membranes. Okay, that's all it says about it. So compound two is used to extract from membranes. Extraction from membranes is a job pretty much reserved for like detergents, right? And so what's important about a detergent is that they have one super nonpolar side and one super polar side. So let's go through and see if they have something that describes a detergent. A says specific configuration of numerous chirality centers. Yeah, it looks like there's a bunch of chiral crap in here, but that's not super important. So I don't know how chirality is gonna help us like separate things. It's not gonna help us separate from a membrane. So maybe not A. B says multiple hydrolysable linkages. I don't know what that word means. You can probably tell because I couldn't pronounce it, but I'm assuming it means like something that can be like hydroxylated or, or, or maybe even like lysed with water or something like that. I have a pretty general rule of thumb though that if I don't know what a word means, I'm not gonna pick it. If I don't understand an answer choice, I'm not gonna pick it unless I know for a fact the other three are wrong. So I say maybe not to B, but I won't completely cross it out. And then C says a combination of large hydrophobic and hydrophilic regions. That's what we talked about, right? That's a detergent. So, so C kind of describes a detergent, so I like it. And then D says a presence of a reducing sugar. Well, that would help us with like one bond or something like that, but that's not gonna help us break down a membrane because our membranes are made of a bunch of, it's a phospholipid bilayer and it has a super nonpolar tail and a super polar head, right? Hydrophilic head 
because you lick with your tongue, your tongue is on your head, hydrophilic head, hydrophobic tails. And so we would need something that's gonna dissolve both of those. So we have a lot of hydrophobics to dissolve the tails, a lot of hydrophilics to dissolve the heads. So the correct answer here is C. And number last says, which experimental evidence suggests that the purified HMPR alpha obtained by the researchers was in its native state? Okay, so I think what they're trying to say here is at the very end, whenever they took it, whenever they took this HMPR alpha, and they like ran it back through these purification processes. What's the biggest sign that what we had to begin with was HMPR alpha? So let's read the answer choices. A says that the HMPR alpha that was obtained retained both compound one and histidine tags. Well, that's not how chromatography works. You don't retain those, you actually pass through those. So I don't like A, I kind of hate it. B says it was purified by two separate chromatography steps. Several things are purified by two separate chromatography steps. It's not the fact that it was purified by two of them, it's the fact that which specific two it was. And I don't, I don't even know that purified is the correct word here. I don't really like that, that it was purified, because if, if it was purified by the first one, then what would be the purpose of the second one? You know what I'm saying? So I don't think it's purified, I think it might be maybe separated. So I don't like B, um, it seems a little too harsh. Let's see if there's something better. C says it exhibited a binding affinity for progesterone that was similar to that exhibited by native HMPR alpha. I didn't really talk about it, but that is kind of what we said here. It said that we had the same binding assay and found that KD or the binding affinity was similar. So to me, that's a pretty good indicator that something is the same molecule is if we have it, we think it's HMPR alpha and we see that it's KD is five. Let's say we think it's KD is five. And then we run it through these tests to make sure that it's KD, um, HMPR alpha. And we see that it's KD is still five after we're confident that it is HMPR alpha. Because this is a protein, and that's kind of what they do is they bind things, and with it being a receptor, that's a pretty good indication to me that um, you know it's doing what receptors do. It's binding, and it's doing it how we expect it to do it. So I like answer choice C. D says it had a nearly identical molecular weight. Okay, well, we didn't talk about molecular weight, so they're just trying to catch you sleeping there. So the correct answer here is answer choice C. Thanks for watching the video. It ended up, it was pretty wordy, but it wasn't quite as bad science-wise as some of the others. So thanks for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Check out the links in the descriptions. I think there's something there for everybody, and I will see you in the next one.